Welcome to ClearFly's portal training, Understanding the Unified Billing Dashboard. My name is Tom Hall, and I will be your host for the next 15 to 20 minutes while we go over the Unified Billing Dashboard. This is an overview uh, class, so we will not dive deep into the portal itself, but we will cover the Unified Billing Dashboard thoroughly. During this session, we will cover how to manage uh, branding on your accounts, how to create your unified billing product catalog, and understanding the pending activation and deactivation tabs. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so that is the wrong tab, one moment. All right, so when you log into the ClearFly portal, um, you're, of course you're gonna enter your username and password. The username is typically your email address for your company, and the password is whatever you have it set at. So once you're into the ClearFly portal, if you do not see the unified billing section of the portal here, it's because you do not have permissions. If you look at the management board, if you have access to that, it will let you know if you have uh, permission for the unified billing by indicating a B underneath the permissions. If you do not have access to this tab, please reach out to your primary contact at ClearFly or your system administrator, and uh, if they are going to grant you permission for unified billing, they were, one of those two will actually be the, the person who gives you that permission. All right, so let's make the assumption that everybody that is participating in this has Unified Billing Dashboard access. Uh, to access that, we're going to go ahead and click the Dashboard link underneath Unified Billing. And uh, from here, as always, the top part Really, the left-hand column is, uh, is almost never going to change. The right-hand column is going to change slightly depending on what dashboard you're looking at. So the left-hand column, as always, is going to tell you your company's name, uh, your account number um, within ClearFly's organization or the ClearFly portal. It's also going to list out your primary point of contact at ClearFly. So this typically either Bob Jenkins, Sam Johnson, or Rob Lewis. If you hover over their name, it will give you their email address as well. On the right-hand column, it's gonna show you the payout account. If you do not have payout account access or permission, you will not be able to It's also going to state that the default branding is either going to be your organization if that was how it was set up, or it is going to state ClearFly. There is a branding fee, which is a $1 per invoice, and there's a processing fee of 5%. That 5% for unified billing covers the collections, um, the, the payment collections, the uh, collections of taxes and the remittance of taxes for your organization as well as any uh, credit card processing fees. So that 5% co covers that. So if you're billing you know, uh, $100, you're going to receive $95 of that unified billing and ClearFly is gonna keep 5%, okay? Uh, track costs. If you wanna track your cost um, for each of your line items, you can click yes you can enter the cost of those uh, individual items that you're gonna add to your product catalog, which I will show you here shortly. And then you will actually generate a report that uh, what the cost is, what you sold it for, and what your margins are. So that's the option of the unified billing dashboard. The middle section here, well actually let's jump to the bottom section, the history section. It's just going to simply be a history of activity within the unified billing dashboard itself. So we can see on 320, which is today, 
uh, Joe Smith, which in this example, that is me, uh, has enabled cost tracking. So uh, that that is something that was newly added. All right. If I get in there and I disable that, going to show me, show that uh, Joe Smith disabled cost tracking. We're going to leave it on for now. All right, so let's talk about the middle section because that's the most important. So the first tab that's always going to open up is it's going to open up a list of all of your unified billing active accounts. A couple things on here. Uh, we'll talk about the manage button last, but uh, the code is going to be the customer's account code within the ClearFly portal. The name, reference, I've, I've never actually seen the reference used uh, before. The branding section means, you know, how is that invoice and how are those quotes being uh, branded when they go out to them? So we can see that Dunder Mifflin is currently branded as ClearFly, um, whereas widgets is branded as ABC Telecom, okay? Uh, again, your organization's name is gonna replace ABC Telecom. It's also gonna show the invoice amount. So those are those columns. As far as the management port, so let's say you wanna change Dunder Mifflin to branding of ABC Telecom, you're simply gonna on the Mifflin button you're going to come up here to branded as, you're gonna click update, you're gonna select your company, and you're gonna update branding, all right? Now if we go back to the Unified Billing Dashboard, it's now gonna show as Thunder Mifflin is branding ABC Telecom, okay? The second tab is the branding tab. This is gonna show you your logo. Uh, what ClearFly does is we put, take your logo, we add the powered by ClearFly portion to it. And that is the logo that gets produced on the invoices and the quotes or the rate sheet, all right? The email address here, is the email that uh, we send notification to if a customer is disputing one of your line items, all right? Uh, the company's name here, of course, is ABC Telecom. Now, this is actually a really good, good scenario. So if ABC Telecom also has a second division, and let's call it ABC Networks, uh, you can have multiple businesses listed under your account with different logos for each. So if that was going to be the case, you're going to let us know and we'll add that second uh, branding option for you. If you need to make any changes to this, particularly the email address, you're going to simply click on the unified billing uh, link. You're going to come in here, you can change the name or you can edit the name and you can of course edit the email address. Okay. Let's go back. So that's the second tab, the branding tab. The third tab, which is the products, is really going to be the crux of this presentation. If we click on the products tab, this is where you build your own personal catalog. Okay, these are items that you're going to add to your invoices or to your quotes. So in order to do so, you're going to click the add button. You're gonna decide, is it going to be a recurring monthly charge or is it gonna be a one-time fee? We'll start with a recurring monthly charge. So if we click recurring, we're gonna name that product we're gonna enter a description here, which is, is for taxing purposes only, and then you're gonna set a default price. Now, my suggestion as far as, as how you name your products, this is gonna take a lot of foresaw, forethought on your side. Um, you wanna name it something unique. 
if we go back and we look at what was already set up here, you can see where somebody, you know, somebody within the organization has put all work server rental, all work system rental. Um, and that's fine because it's generic, right? But my suggestion would be ABC server rental, ABC system rental. Uh, and that way you're not calling out a specific product, all right? The problem with calling out specific products is, especially from a quoting standpoint, if you produce a quote and it has a specific part number, people could end up in that part number and shopping you. So, you know, make it to you. Make it something, you know, that uh, the customer is, is feeling like it is your, your product and your solution to them. On top of it, if you use a specific manufacturer's name, if later down the line you choose to no longer do business with that manufacturer, well, now you're going to have to list out a whole bunch more items. And once you've invoiced or once you've used these items, you won't be able to delete them. So again, you know, if you had a generic name of ABC Telcom Server Rental, rental it doesn't matter if it's an Allworks, a Grandstream, a Mitel, an Avaya, it, it doesn't matter, right? So that is my suggestion when it comes to creating products. All right, so let's go back and add a product. We're going to say recurring. We're going to name it ABC. I don't know, maybe, maybe you're going to rent them a or sell them a, a PoE switch because, again, you're doing IP phones. PoE switches are better than using a power brick. So we're going to say an ABC 24 port PoE switch. All right. The description, again, this is for taxation purposes only. So it's really going to fall into three categories, hardware, software, or labor. All right. Um, any hardware, whether it's telecom or uh, network related, is going to be taxed the same. If your market taxes differently for the type of hardware, okay, well, then maybe you need to be a little bit more specific here when we say telecom hardware. All right. But otherwise, those three headings are really going to be what you're going to put into the uh, description here. All right. The default price is just your standard price. When you add the product to your quote, you can adjust the price just like you can adjust the price on all of Clearfly's products as well. So if you were going to say, okay, the ABC 24 port POE switch, this is a monthly rental. We're going to go ahead and charge them. I don't know. Let's just say $24 because a dollar a port. Put in the default price of $24, enter, add, and now that product is there. Same scenario for a one-time fee, all right? One-time fee may be installation and training. So we say ABC, installation and training, description. Well, that's actually labor, so we're going to put labor in there, and we're going to go ahead and put a default price of 500 bucks. Okay? And again, depending on the installation and the training, you know, some may be 500, some may be 250, some may be, you know, $1,500. But again, you can change that um, on the quote itself. So again, just, just to reemphasize, do some thinking ahead of time as far as what you want to name your products. And again, you know, try to keep your company's name in there. Indicate your company's name in there in some, some way, shape, or form. Also, I'm going to caution you about doing bundles. Um, some partners do, you know, just a bundled charge. So it's ABC um, Phone Solution. And 
they just charge a flat rate for everything. Again, if that works for you, it does work for some people, but if, if there's labor oriented hardware, software, and it's a mix match of different uh, taxable items, you probably want to break those out. All right. Otherwise, from our standpoint, we're going to come back to you and say, hey, what does that actually consist of? And, you know, it's going to be very difficult for us to determine the taxation on those items, particularly for your local municipality in your state. Okay, so moving on to the pending activations. So the pending activation tab. So once you add a add one of these products to a quote and the customer signs the quote. So as soon as they've signed the quote, Clearfly of course is going to get notified that service, you know, a project needs to be started. Once a project started, Clearfly will activate our products when you tell us to. All right. So when you want the, the voice service turned up, we're going to activate it on that date. When the numbers are being imported, that's going to be negotiated between Clearfly and the losing carrier and yourselves. All right. So we have a hard set date on that. With unified billing, we do not know when you want to activate your line items. All right. Because you may be offering the, the customer a special. Um, you may be offering them 30 days free as an incentive to get them to move forward. Or maybe they've been using your products for the last two months and you haven't invoiced them because you're waiting for their phone system or their phone service to be turned up. So depending on activation, anytime there is a product that needs to be started, um, it is gonna show up as pending activation. Um, so if there was one pending activation is going to have a one here, all right? And in that scenario, you're gonna to go to the pending activation, you're gonna click on the product name and you're going to have a start. So let's just do that real quick. Let's take a look at one of these accounts. We'll take a look at uh, widgets. I think that's good. All right. so. We're going to add a charge, and, and again, this adding of charges is covered under another one, but I, I do want to show a pending activation, so we're going to kind of just go through this real quick. We're going to say add a charge. It's going to be a recurring charge. It's going to be a ABC 24 port switch, and there's going to be one of them. We're going to leave the price there, and uh, we're going to choose activate later okay so now if we go back to the unified billing or actually to the the home page you can immediately see there's a pending activation if we go to the unified billing dashboard you're now going to see that there is one pending activation which means you need to do something in order for us to bill that so we click on that tab it will show you all pending activations in this scenario, just like what we just did. There, the customer is widgets. We have one item. And to make a change, we're going to click on the account. We're going to look at the unified tab, billing tab, which is the first one that's going to open up. And it is going to show ABC 24 port switch and the pending, uh, the period is pending, okay? As I stated earlier, this is just an overview, so we're not gonna actually go through that process. What I really wanted to get to was just showing you that on the unified billing dashboard, it will indicate to you if there's any pending activations. Same scenario with pending deactivations. So if a, co a customer is leaving, and they've submitted their final notice. And uh, within that organization, they have some unified billing items. We're going to indicate that those items have a pending deactivation and that you need to set that end date, okay? Disputes, if a customer is disputing one of your charges, um, that will appear here. 
And then the Files tab, uh, really there isn't uh, anything under the Files tab that will show up there. So um, that's pretty much it. All right, folks. Well, that is really all I wanted to cover as far as the unified billing uh, dashboard and understanding that process. So again, as always, my name is Tom Hall. Um, and uh, these are your three primary contacts within ClearFly's organization, Sam Johnson, Bob Jenkins, Rob Lewis. Um, and of course, if you are unable to get a hold of any of those three gentlemen um, or a specific question that uh, you think that I can answer for you, please feel free to reach out to me as well. And uh, thank you so much for supporting ClearFly. And uh, we look forward to uh, continued success with you and your customers.